Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my study. We're still in the Sanhedrin, this secret meeting, and uh, really just in verses 49 and 50, which will be in for today and tomorrow. Uh, and here's the question to get us started. What is Caiaphas proposing, and who seeks to gain from it? What is Caiaphas proposing, and who seeks to gain from it? Have a quick read and discuss and come back together. Well, I wonder what you spotted there. What, are, what is Caiaphas proposing? You know nothing at all. You do not realise that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. <clears throat> what is he proposing? He's proposing the death of Jesus. Uh, a murder. It's better that Jesus die than the whole nation perish, by which he means the, the logical extrapolation from Jesus rising up as a, a political messiah, Rome coming in and destroying the nation, uh, which we looked at yesterday. Uh, who seeks to gain? Well, at first blush, for the nation, the nation benefits because uh, Jesus is sacrificed, turning aside the wrath of Rome. But actually, that's not quite what he says, is it? You do not realise that it is better for you that one man die for the people. And the sentence would make perfect sense without that for you, uh, wouldn't it? You do not realise it's better that one man die for the people. And then the people would be the, the winners. But uh, Caiaphas says, for you. Jesus is uh, being offered up as a substitutionary sacrifice. That is... He's dying in the place of the people. Uh, but the reason he has to die is not for the people. Caiaphas isn't interested in the people, just as uh, at the back, back end of chapter 8, the, the religious leaders weren't interested in the benefit of the people. They're interested in their own establishment, their own political position, their own power. It is better for Jesus to die than that this gets politically very messy and we miss out. Very selfish, isn't it? Which is the nature of counting the cost and uh, deciding that it's not worth paying. Uh, Jesus, who went around raising the dead and uh, and healing those who had been born blind, couldn't be ignored. People weren't ignoring him. Uh, the church was growing. People were believing in him. And therefore, even if you didn't want to believe in Jesus, you couldn't ignore his position and power. He was a threat to their establishment, their uh, their alternative religious system, which happened to be Jewish, or at least a, a mockery of Judaism. But exactly the same thing would happen with Rome, with its paganism, and has happened in every culture down through the ages in every country, where Jesus has been seen as a threat to uh, the political establishment, that because it's a, a threat to the religious establishment. We think of uh, in our country, the Church of England, as the established church. But more broadly, Christianity is, our, is a sort of state religion, or has historically been. Um, but that wasn't always the case, was it? And uh, when Britain was pagan and Christianity came in, it was clear that it, it, was, a, it was a challenge to the, the religion and the politics of the, of, of the day. So it is everywhere and down through the ages. Jesus is not only a saviour, but he is also Lord. He is both the, the spiritual leader and the political leader for the people of God. And uh, these guys, they can't ignore him. They can hate him, but they can't ignore him. They've got to do something about it. They want him dead. Which, of course, is what, um, in various cultures down through the centuries, Rome particularly were brutal at this, at trying to slaughter Christians. Because just as Jesus was a political threat, so Christianity presented a challenge, didn't it? And uh, we shouldn't be surprised if the church is repressed in this country as uh, the state religion becomes thorough, thoroughgoing non-belief in Christianity and some sort of secular materialist alternative. We shouldn't be surprised. Uh, we should pray. And we'll see tomorrow 
we should laugh as well. We'll come to that. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that you are good. Thank you that uh, Jesus is good. Thank you that uh, being his people is a great blessing. We're very conscious, our Father, that Jesus was hated and your people have been hated everywhere down through the ages for uh, not only holding to a, a religious belief that the mainstream doesn't like, but, uh, but the political implications of that. We recognise only one Lord, who is Jesus. Father, please make us prepared to, to stand with Jesus in these strange days. And please help us to see over the rest of this week quite what a catastrophe it is for the religious leaders to turn their backs on Jesus like this. For it's in his name we pray. Amen.